According to supply managers in the nine Mid-America states, how is the economy performing? According to our survey of uh, supply managers in manufacturing for the nine Mid-America states here from Creighton University, the overall reading was not good for the month of November. In fact, it's moving into what I'll call recession territory. November's reading was 42.2, and that's down significantly from 51.5. Normally, any readings in the low 40s is just indicating that the manufacturing sector is in uh, recession territory. Now, it may move out of that in months ahead, but nonetheless, it was not a good reading, and that's going to spill over into the broader economy in the first quarter of 2024. It's the lowest index we recorded since the pandemic, of, and that was June of 2020 when the initial months of the pandemic. Uh, 14% of the manufacturing supply managers expect the economy to expand. So 14%. The other 86%, of course, expected to da turn down, down or, in fact, move sideways. I, I, we ask here at Creighton University, we ask the greatest risk facing the businesses out there. And recession was named by six, of, approximately six of 10, said recession was the number one risk to their business. Labor shortages, interestingly, was number two. That was uh, labor shortages, and that was two of 10 supply managers named labor shortages as the biggest issue. Number three, higher input prices. One out of 10 named uh, higher input prices. And finally, the uh, rising interest rates was identified by one out of 10. So it was not a good report. And I expect the national number when it comes out later on this morning, I think it'll be equally dreary with the manufacturing sector really dragging along. And I think we have to say now that the manufacturing sector is in a recession and that we'll have to wait and see how, how that spills over into the broader economy. Now here I'll bring up the graph, the graph showing Creighton there, Creighton's uh, overall index in blue. And you see how it's moved, uh, uh, and that's uh, from June of 2022, when it was 58.6 down to 42.2 for this month. And you see the national number there in red. And it, again, I, I expect it to move uh, lower for the month of November. So it was, again, all in all, not a good report. The overall index is pointing to, uh, at least as it spills over to the broader economy, slower growth for the overall economy, recession for the manufacturing economy. What were the hiring trends? Hiring for November was not good. The uh, October number was weak. It was at 47.5 and November was 42.5. So moving lower there as well. So not much hiring going on, actually job losses for the month. Now, 45% uh, reported job losses. So that means 55% reported either, mo most of those reported uh, no change in employment. 43% reported a shortage of job applicants. So not, not as many job applicants. So there's, we've got this situation where we have some businesses shedding jobs, others holding constant, but we're also seeing some labor hoarding going on there. So not good on the labor front. Um, at the same time, manufacturing wages among the nine states that we survey, wages expanded by 3.4%. That's approximately equal to the uh, inflation rate. So real wages, inflation-adjusted wages for the region, manufacturing region, uh, were, were flat. What inflation trends are you noticing? Inflation reading for November was not good, meaning it rose much more briskly than I was expecting what we call the wholesale inflation gauge rose to 71.1. That's up from 55.0 for October. So we're seeing a lot more inflationary pressures, at least for the month of November. Now, of course, we'll have to wait and see what happens for the re far in December and, of course, the first quarter of 2024. And uh, individuals and businesses and others need to keep an eye on the month-over-month -month changes rather than year-over-year. -year. But when you look at the last three months, the core inflation rate, that's the, that's the CPI, Consumer Price Index, up by one percentage point. The core is up by less than that at eight-tenths of one percent. Now, when you turn to the PPI, the Producer Price Index, or the Wholesale Price, which is what we're tracking, over the last three months, it's, it's only up seven-tenths of one percent. On the services side, up by about five-tenths of one percent. So the manufacturer, the uh, product side, which is what we're surveying, up a bit more than that. 
inflation rate remains above the Fed's target for the rest of 2023. And what we're seeing, of course, is disinflation, not deflation. Now, if you listen to the politicians, you'll hear some of them say, well, prices are coming down. No, prices are not coming down. Uh, price the rate of growth is coming down. So, but now that's likely to cease, and a lot will depend on what happens in the price of oil and other uh, uh, energy related products. What is the economic outlook? The outlook is somewhat what we've been seeing a rolling, what I'll call a rolling recession. In other words, the overall US economy continues to expand. But manufacturing is not, and that's, of course, what we're surveying here at Creighton University. Likewise, banking is in deep trouble. Uh, real estate not doing well, certainly commercial real estate and residential real estate, certain parts of residential real estate. So all in all, not a good uh, outlook going forward for, for December and for the first quarter of 2024. I expect no rate change at the Federal Reserve's meeting on uh, a final meeting on December the 12th and 13th. Now, the next meeting, which is at the end of the January, there, we'll have to wait and see on that. There may there could be a rate hike then. I know investors out there expecting a rate cut at any time. Don't don't hold your breath on that one. I don't expect the Federal Reserve to move on rates anytime soon. Uh, and what we're so don't expect that. Keep an eye on the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. That's more important than, in my judgment, and what's going on in the funds rate. That's the short end of the curve, short, in, short interest rates. They're, uh, they're holding firm. I expect that rate to remain as we talk today. I expect it to remain that way, five, five and a quarter to five and a half percent going forward, probably well into the first quarter of 2024. The CPI, Month over month, we're probably talking about three tenths to four tenths of one percent. That's for November when that December when that comes out in December. Long term rates will move higher, but at a slower pace. That would be long term rates such as the mortgage rate. We're going to see continuing higher mortgage rates. The idea that they're going to be coming down, I just don't expect that right now. The prime rate will remain at eight and a half percent at least until February the first. And we'll, that's, uh, that could even rise, but I expect it to remain the same into the first quarter of 2024. Keep an eye on the bond market. The yield on the 10-year treasury is going to tell us about all you need to know. That yield has been moving, between, of course, between 45 and 4.8%. And if it rises up there above 4.8 toward 5%, that would be a problematic, I'll call it. That would be uh, so that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, also, the Fed, as I said, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet is where the action is right now. They're selling off or let, allowing to mature ninety five billion dollars a month. That tends to put upward pressure on long term interest rates. I expect that to continue. The National ISM reading it comes out later on this morning. I expect it to be down for the month of November. And of course, that's just indicating that the national manufacturing economy, like the regional manufacturing economy, is not doing well. Uh, keep an eye on the price of the barrel of oil. Barrel of oil is now moving upward a bit, approaching uh, West Texas crude, approaching $80 a barrel. If that should ride, move into territory such as the um, into above 80 toward 90, that would be a problem for the Federal Reserve because that's going to put upward pressure on inflation. And that's not what we want to see right now. That's what the Fed doesn't want to see. And any, most of us don't want to see. Listen carefully to the statements of members of the FOMC. That's the Federal Open Market Committee. They're those, particularly those members that vote. Now, that's uh, 12 members of the committee that, that vote, uh, seven governors and five presidents of the Federal Reserve System. The, listen to them, now, particularly those that vote. Now, the other members, the other presidents that sit on the Open Market Committee, they also talk. You have to listen to them as well. They'll try to indicate in advance what's going on uh, in terms of interest rates, what's going on in inflation, how they see the economy moving forward. So that's it for the month of November. Again, it was not a good report. What we saw is a uh, an economy, a manufacturing economy that's moving into negative territory. 
We're also seeing inflation rearing its ugly head. The combination of those two, that those two are not good. And so, of course, uh, that's a problem going forward. Until we meet again on the first business day of next month, may your economic cup run to Thurber. This is Ernie Goss with Creighton University in downtown Omaha, Nebraska.